Welcome to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is the author of the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, published by Welcome, a social worker and activist. You can like this show's fan page at www.facebook.com slash the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Feel free to post any comments, questions, or requests for his book on the fan page. Now let's go into the studio with your host, Mr. Keenan Lake, and co-host, Marcus Select. Jazz is actually a preacher, and he's also the director of the I Have a Dream program, this after-school program, here in Nashville, North Carolina. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, without any further ado, Jazz, welcome to the show. Kenan, thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to uh, discussing this. Yes, and welcome aboard, uh, young man. And Kenan, uh, talk about the subject for today. So the subject for the day, Coach, we're going to talk. This has been this has been something that we've been talking about. Oh, uh, that's been been discussed over the last week since the Zimmerman trial had uh, had come. The verdict had come down. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the Zimmerman trial, about what you know, weigh in on our thoughts about that, Coach, today in jazz. But uh, we also want to give some insight to some things that try to address the the nation about what's going on. So you know, before what, what I like to do is get started, is jazz. I'd like to find out about, you know, what you think about the whole verdict in the trial and then kind of move in and give my, my opinion on the whole subject matter at hand, too. Sure thing. You know, I think the first thing that I'd like to share is that it's just very tragic what is taking place. I think I speak for anyone uh, with a heart to say that, unfortunately, uh, Trayvon has been killed, and a uh, young man, is uh, his life is over. Um, so before I share any of my thoughts, I'd just like to extend my condolences to his family and say that, unfortunately, um, this tragedy has taken place. And the question, I believe, is always, uh, how then shall we respond? What should our response be? Uh, I think we should do more than simply choose a side, but we should also ask the question, um, how, do, how then do we move forward? And so uh, my thoughts are that, unfortunately, this young man has, has died. Only God knows the, the details in and out of what took place on that evening. Um, but I think as far as an educator, as far as a pastor, as far as being um, a director of a nonprofit serving in a low-income community, I think as someone who has influence in this community in Asheville, I think we should be asking ourselves the question, how should we train our young men to respond to this? And a part of this response should be to make sure that our young people, especially young African-American men, understand that we don't have an even playing ground. We don't have an even playing field. Um, and we have to be aware of that. So I think Trayvon Martin should not have approached uh, George Zimmerman the way he did. And uh, I think it cost him his life. And uh, I don't know what took place. I think uh, the argument can be made both directions. But uh, what I'm saying is, had he not approached George Zimmerman the way he did, um, I think that the outcome would have been much different. And um, that's my perspective. Okay, and uh, thank you, Jazz, for you know, letting, sharing your, your thoughts with us about that. Coach, before I weigh in on the thoughts, what would you like to say about that? Well, I mean, this is a lot going on with this particular case, but, you know, the bottom line uh, is the, the responsibility of both parties. Uh, and at this junction, the responsibility for this incident, this tragedy, has only fell on one side, and while there are people marching um, and people protesting for greater issues that perhaps are sp spinning out of this situation, I just don't think that Mr. Zimmerman, 
who I respect for being a neighborhood watch. I, mean, I remember posing that in my own uh, community at one point. But I also remember them saying that all neighborhood watch people would not do X, Y, and Z. And there was a list of those things for liability reasons. But mm-hmm. that being said, I just don't think that uh, Trayvon should bear the burden alone in the sense uh, if a fight did ensue. However, the case, you know, happened. What we see now is a bit more than we expected. We see hostility. We see uh, marches. We see, uh, you know, even Republicans saying that, you know, this is nothing and this is you know, just race baiting and this isn't, you know, uh, starting, you know, something that wasn't really there. And But, I, you know, my mother said one time, I'll sum it up and say it like this. She said, whatever's in the dark will come to the light. And I promise you that Trayvon Martin's life and the instance that this has happened, this tragedy, is to show America something that we have been denying. And I don't want to say it's all race. Uh, it's part of classism, classism, because if, you, if you're if you dark and you can't be seen well and perhaps dark skin and wear a hoodie, then you're a criminal or a thug or something to that tune. And that may be something that we may need to change, but... Overall, we just don't really feel uh, as Americans that this has been good for anyone, whether the Zimmerman family or the Martin family. And I'll, I'll reserve further comment later on. I got another caller on the Breaking line. Breaking up I'm a little bit. It's like you're real far away. Yeah, I think he must have a phone like yours, brother. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. Know. We can hear I you now. Better, no. Actually, no, you know, actually, he has an iPhone. He has one of your phones, Jazz. <laughs> so you, so you and him right? in the same boat. <laughs> is that, hey, Tyson, Tyson, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear, I can hear you guys good. Okay. Okay, you sound better now. But So, Tyson, this is what the subject matter was about today, man. We, we actually weighed in on the Zimmerman. <clears throat> the Zimmerman uh, trial and, and the verdict and stuff like that. And I was actually about to give my opinion on the whole fact, but since you're on the air now, uh, Coach has already stated his, his opinion on it and Jazz has stated his opinion on it. Why don't you tell the audience what you think about, you know, that whole verdict and what you think about the matter and before we go forward. Oh, man, I hate I, hate I missed uh, the dialogue, the earlier dialogue. But, you know, I think it's sad, man. Um, you you know, there, there are lots of, the, the, the sad thing is, you, the, the treatment of line cases is pretty tragic. Um, but even more so, the cases that you don't hear about, that, you know, that go on. Um, you know, I, I think that he should have at least been convicted of manslaughter. I think, I, I knew they weren't going to be able to convict him of second degree murder because you have to go out seeking, you know, to kill someone. And I, I necessarily don't think that's what he was out to do. I think he was just overzealous. I think he was reckless, and it was pretty much like homicide. Um, you know, even the bigger issue is, is how hard, and I, and I actually saw this in a Facebook post with one of my buddies uh, earlier this week, an uh, even bigger issue is you know, how much more black-on-black crime goes on and gets no notoriety. Like, you know, this kid got a lot of notoriety, and I think a lot of positive will come out of it, but it's a lot more that goes on man, that, that nobody ever speaks of. Um, right. And like we said it before, I think, you know, it shows that when you take six jurors, um, and there were six white women who were jurors, I think that they, they, they could relate more to George Zimmerman as far as recognizing or stereotyping Trayvon Martin as a young black male um, who could possibly be doing something wrong based on how he was dressed. And I think, you know, when, when it came out there were six white women, you know, from that area that had been chosen as jurors, I already knew that the prosecution was going to have to do a great job to win the case. And they didn't. I mean, there were a lot of things. They didn't prepare their witnesses. Uh, there was a lot of miscues on the prosecution. Mm-hmm. Account, the kind of, you know, it, it all came, it came forth, you know, when the, when the verdict came out. Oh, uh, man. Well, listen, um, to save track of time, and before we go to uh, our first commercial, you know, I actually agree with you, Tyson. I think that, first of all, to, to state my opinion, I think that George Zimmerman racially profiled um, – Martin. I think that after racially profiling him, he then proceeded he then proceeded to follow him. And then after a, a, a confrontation ensued, you know, he then, you know, we also know the rest, he ended up taking his life. Now, um, I, agree, I agree with you, Tyson. Do I think that George Zimmerman sought out to kill any African-American kids or an African-American person at that? No, I don't. But I think that, I think that because of the thing that we're in today is racially profiling how he did, 
I think that led to the to the disregard to what the dispatcher said, and then ultimately the confrontation. But then you have to take into consideration the question too. You know, um, George Zimmerman knew he had a loaded gun, and he knew that. The, and, and, and the thing about it is, he didn't have a safety on the gun. He didn't have to cock the gun. The gun was already loaded and was ready to be fired. Right. He knew he was aware of this. Trayvon Martin wasn't. So that there too also allows me to think that there's something else that's going on now. I agree with you as well, Tyson, about the about the whole trial situation. I don't think that when they did the trial, they ever sought out to um, convict or have uh, George Zimmerman found guilty on anything. In fact, oh, yeah. if we if we if we think about it, the only reason that there ever was a trial was because the, uh, because of all the marches, all of the outcry from all of the public yeah. speakers. They finally had a trial, and then when you look at, like you said, the jurors, and then all of the you know the the prosecution left a lot of things. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know anything about law and all that kind of stuff. But I do know that there was a lot of holes in the prosecution. So while we're on this topic, though, gentlemen, I want to take this to a greater thing because, and, and folks, the reason I'm saying this is because we have, we have two, and actually three, I take that, but we have three men besides myself. We have three men on this telephone and on this radio show. We have, we have Mr. Jazz Cathcart, who is not only a preacher and a minister, but he is the director of a youth uh, after school program, we have Mr. Tyson Bates, who is uh, who owns and directs his his, um, his enrichment center in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then we also have Mr. Marcus Select, aka the coach, who has dealt with youth and done youth programs around the country as well. So we have some great minds on the show today. And what I want to talk to you guys, gentlemen, about after we come back from my break, I want everybody to think about this on our break. Not only where do we go from here, but as a, as a culture, particularly with everybody on the phone being African-American men, how, ha, how, do we ha, how can we stand up to correct and fix the situation? Because one of the things I want to talk about is this, and this is my personal opinion. I don't think that George Zimmerman was shooting Trayvon Martin. I think that he was shooting the image that the African-American oh, male portrays. Mm -hmm. So when we come back from break, I want us to talk about that a little bit more. And then if you guys have anything you want to elaborate on, we'll get into that too. All right, Coach. All right, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Keenan Lake Show live and on demand on SIBN Radio. Everybody stand by. We'll be right back after these messages. Responsible. Accountable. Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that. That's right, the new book all the way from Asheville, North Carolina, representing the legacy of Benny Lake is Keenan Lake, the author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com or call 828-582-2261. That's 828-582-2261. MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. Ready, ready, set, set, go, go. That's right, DCC. Are you ready for the hardcore motivation, daily inspiration, and sure up your spiritual foundation on DCC if you want more? On the go, and you need to know www four one five hyphen nine six radio dot com. Join us there as we cheer you on to the finish line of life. This is not your mama show. This show is for the new generation of those young men and women who know and realize that I've done enough foolish things, I've made enough mistakes, and now it is my time to accept the philosophy of DCC. That is, I am, I am, I am the common denominator to every situation. Join me at www.415-96radio.com. That's www.415-96radio.com. And follow me on Twitter. You're listening to the sounds of the, sound. the Coach's Corner. All right, everybody, we're back with the Keenan Lake Show live and on demand on SIBN Radio. Gentlemen, 
Whoa, what a heavy conversation, and we only have a few minutes left. Time go by fast when we're trying to have fun. You're right. Well, Coach, listen, I want to go with Jazz. Jazz, I want you to weigh in on your, your, your other thoughts about this whole topic that we're talking about today. Yeah, I uh, I want to say in response to some of the thoughts you shared here that I just don't think it's fair to assume what Zimmerman's motives were. Now, let me be clear. Um, I'm an African-American man. I spent a lot of my youth. Uh, hold, hold on, Jazz. Jazz, yeah, I can barely hear you. Carson, is that your phone? No, that's not me. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that, where that's coming from. All right, go ahead, Jazz. We can, I, can hear you, I can hear you better now, Jazz. Tyson, you got to figure that out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I was saying was um, I think at best we can only speculate about Zimmerman's motives. And I don't know Zimmerman. I don't know him. Um, so I think in fairness, we have to simply look at the facts, but I don't think it's right. I think, in, in a way, we're reverse discriminating against him by not knowing his heart, not knowing his motives, and attempting uh, to place certain uh, intentions in, in the story without knowing we're not God. So we cannot assume that he was racially profiling. Who's to say that he was racially profiling as opposed to simply trying to do his job and I, but I, I, to the safety I, 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 of his neighborhood. I, I want to just I just want to interject here though that if you read the sure bylaws if, yeah. you, if if you read the bylaws of a homeowners association and okay. if you if you accept the position of a watch captain it does not give yeah. you the authority it does not give you uh, the authority no. to approach or and to shoot but sure. what gave Zimmerman the authority, I think what he's saying, Jazz is saying, is right in context. What gave him the authority is the Stand Your Ground law. Now, the Stand Your Ground law okay. will take a whole other show. But what I'm saying uh, to the public and to those that are listening is that, no, we're not going to demonize the man. But we know that he did not get his authority from the Homeowners Association. He got his authority. We got, we, got some, we got some feedback coming into the show again, so we am sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. again, there's a lot of wind coming from somebody's extension. Yeah. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of drowning us out. Yeah. I, mean, I hear everybody clear. Okay, maybe that's on my end, because I can hear now. There it goes. Whatever happened, it just went off, so now I'm good. Well, what, what I'm saying is this is a very delicate issue. Because at, yes, at, at, at best, as you said, not to judge, it makes it difficult. But, but, but what we have a greater odds with, and I think the marches have proven this out in the recent days, is that the stand right. your gr ground law does not give wiggle room, I quote, unquote, exactly. wiggle room yeah, for exactly. greater common sense discretion when faced mm -hmm. with possible violence. Of any kind. Okay. Okay, you, but here's my question. Go ahead, Tyson. You, you, this, this is my thing. I don't have cable TV, so um, I didn't hear the 911 call, not all of it. I didn't hear his part. Where, and, and this is how, this, for me, this is what sells it, that he profiled the kid. When he came, came out of his mouth and said, these a-holes always get away. So, so when these, when you use the word these, who are you talking about? These as in these white kids or this black kid who lives on the hoodie who looks like these, this particular group of people. But, but, my, so, but my brother, but my brother, if, if I can interject, who's to say that he's speaking of color. The fact uh, of the matter uh, is there had been uh, a string of thefts in his community. Right, but, Am but I right? to answer that question, no, Jazz, yes, that's true. Jazz, to answer that so, question... So if there had been a, a, a string, if there had been a string of thefts in his community, who's to say he's not simply speaking of the fact that there had been multiple thefts and those Okay, Those jazz. Thieves continue to get away. Jazz, yeah. I like your point, Jazz, and I and I think your okay. point is valid. But I just want to rebut, push back on the Absolutely. fact that all of those that were breaking in, and this is a whole other issue that Keenan's been talking about about us representing right. us right. But I mean, that's a whole other show. But Jazz, 
Okay. All of those break-ins were done by African Americans. So I think what okay. I think it's fair to say though that you're right in one instance, but I think that with George Zimmerman having an aspiration to be in law enforcement, it agitated right. him right. and aggravated him to move beyond common sense and to go exactly. into an area that only stand your ground would protect him. Because, exactly. let, let me, and I let think that's a civil one. rights matter and not a race matter more more over more over than not. Hey, hey look, hey, hey, okay. Let, let me, I, I, look, I, I had a conversation with Ken about a year ago. Um, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm a couple years past thirty, but I'm like the, the man, old man on my block. Um, you know, I work with kids, so I, I can't stand seeing the young black man with their pants hanging down. They're, they're cutting through people's yard, they're throwing trash down. I can't stand it. And, you know, uh, one time last year, I, I had a, a work with a young man. He was a Spanish in my neighborhood. He cut through my yard, and I asked him not to do it. He, he looked at me, he said a couple choice words, and he kept going in there. And you know, forget you, I'm going to do what I want to do. And, 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 and the reason I'm bringing this point up, like, I can kind of see, and we're going to break in my neighborhood as well. And, and my, like, oh, you know, it's like the Bible calls us the we have to die of our flesh every day. So, seeing these kids, I'm, I'm, and I'm with this, I'm the old man, I see them, and I'm almost sometimes disgusted to the point where I can really put on my face hat or snatch one of them up rather than embrace them out of love. My point you know is that, yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 what I was, you know, I had to step away from myself, man. Mm-hmm. I, my neighbor, I had several next door neighbors and guys across the street from me. Their homes, their girls were kicked in. And I know the kids were black. Mm-hmm. I had, I, I had uh, feces thrown in my truck. Mm-hmm. I had all kinds of things done. Mm-hmm. But I had to remove my personal feelings, no matter how I felt, and try to do something better for the neighborhood. So I try to take the kids in and embrace them. Right. And, and let me let me weigh in real quick. And Jazz, I know Jazz. I know you're trying to get something in Jazz real quick. But let me let me say one okay. thing too. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to point Zimmerman out to be an animal or a bad guy. And I don't think that we're all. I think we're all just giving our opinions. But the thing that this is this is the thing that I have the problem with. I have the problem with. First of all, I have the problem with, moreover how everything arose and how everything happened after the fact, like how. Law enforcement handled things. He was never arrested. I think that I think you could say you could say it's speculation, you know. But I think the, I think the president made this very clear in his speech yesterday. He said, had this been a, a similar situation with reverse roles, from top to bottom, it would have been handled differently. Oh my goodness! I don't, I don't disagree. Well, I, I think don't, to I don't jazz, disagree at all. Yeah, I think to oh, jazz. Oh, what you say, jazz? I said I said I don't disagree at all. I'm not defending. Um, I'm not defending anyone. I, what, what, I, what I'm saying is we have to continue to teach our young black men responsibility. And, yeah. I, and I know we're all in agreement with that. What I'm saying is I'm not saying there was not racial profiling. I'm not saying there was not injustice as far as uh, what happened uh, post uh, the shooting. What, what I'm suggesting is simply that... Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin, like you and Tyson and Coach and myself, as African American men, we can't afford to neglect the fact that there's not an even playing field. That's true. And so, and so he could not afford to approach him the way he did. That's true. That's You're what right. I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think but, he but, couldn't afford that. You, you know, I, I, I want to say something just very briefly. Um, as an educator, as a director of the I Have Dream Foundation of Asheville. Um, we're a long-term mentoring program. We're based in a public housing neighborhood um, in West Nashville. Public housing neighborhood. We're with a group of students through high through school. We started with them when they're in the first grade. Mm-hmm. We work with them until high school. And we give them scholarships to go to college when they graduate. I'm with these students for 13 years, some of them. I've had my students tell me, Mr. Jazz, I don't think it's fair that my teacher only calls down black kids. I asked them, is it only black kids that's giving the teacher problems? 
if it's only black kids that's giving the teacher problems, then maybe the teacher needs to call down only black kids. So oh, yeah, we no can't, doubt about it. So we can't assume that just because Trayvon Martin uh, was following, uh, or excuse me, that Zimmerman was following Trayvon, that he was racist. <laughs> However, we do know that the, that the, the thefts were uh, at the hands of African American men. So I don't think it was it was color so much as it was simply the situation. It was the circumstances. Exactly. That led him. And, and you know what, ja- uh, Jazz, yeah. you may be, you may have a very valid point that has not been picked up nationally. But another point that Keenan brought out is it might not have just been handled right. Had it been handled right, because I assure you, for whatever reason, if I would have shot somebody like that, being African American, and they were white, they wouldn't have taken my word for the story. They would have arrested me and found out my story. So maybe Keenan has a greater point. You know. Kenan, we got one minute left. Go ahead, Coach. No, I was saying we got about a minute and a half left. Okay. Well, let me just say this last thing, and then we're going to start wrapping up, folks. And I think we may stay on the line, of course, if we stay on the line and finish up for another topic. But real quick, the last thing that I want to interject is say say this, too. Um, I think, Jazz, if you hit the point on the head, I think Tyson might have mentioned something to this, too. We we as African-American men, we got to be able to, to, to teach our men better. We got to be able to teach our youth and our young adults better because, Jazz, you made a point too and said, "Look, we all know this. You know, we. I think all four of us know this to be true. The same thing that applies. The same thing that applies to, you know, to to white America doesn't apply to us. I mean, that's just, that's just the bottom line. You know, I can't I can't go out here and do certain things. Even in 2013, I can't get away with doing certain things than than, than the opposite the opposite race. Okay, and that's the truth." But it, it, I think even more important. I think even more importantly, though, Jazz and, and, and folks listening, I think I think we kind of got to get beyond that because it's like when when is it when? Okay, it's not fair, but when is when is it going to be right? Because it's not I'll right. Tell you, I'll tell you when it's going to be right. It's going to be right when we start earning the name back for ourselves. When when yeah, black people right. are associated with more positives than negatives, then we exactly. can start having this conversation on, 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 in another way. So, yeah, so exactly. Yes, sir. So, so we've got to we've got to help our. You know, just today we we played basketball with the fellows from church after church today. One of my students, I was dropping off. This was just about an hour ago. Dropping off in Piscopee, in PVA, the public housing neighborhood that we're based in, and I'm having a conversation with a young man who's in the I Have a Dream uh, Foundation. I got word that he had uh, stolen something from the mall this past week, mm-hmm. and uh, the the police. Uh, decided not to press charges against him. And I had to help him understand that what he did was contribute to the negative perspective that people have of black people. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, so, so, now, so, so now you have got to, I told this young man, you've got to take it upon yourself that I'm going to contribute positivity to the black perspective. Or, to, excuse me, well, to the black stereotype. That's our grandmother's and message. Kuzay, that's our grandmother's message, and that's a good message to give our kids. That listen, you already didn't you tarnish in the image. Go ahead, Jazz. I just wanted to say that. That's that, that's exactly right, and you know, and and that's exactly right. Um, a, a quotation that I saw in an interview about seven years ago was by LL Cool J. He's not really doing much on the, on the music scene anymore, like his music or not. What he said was this: He said that every day we have the opportunity to prove or disprove the negative stereotypes that are thrown at us. And that's our responsibility. And Keenan, that's what you're doing in your program. My daddy taught me that. You're training these you're training these young men to take responsibility, to say, man, I want people to know that I'm about more than thugging. I'm about more exactly. than smoking weed, wow. drinking, game yeah. banging. Man, I'm gonna pull my pants up. I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward into my future and I'm gonna show the world that although I'm in the hood, the hood doesn't have to be in me. Okay? There you go. And so there you go. You, we, we so, so I hate that we got. I hate that we got to run. But we, listen we, to this. We, we gonna take a break. We, no, we'll that's take up. a we'll take a break and then we'll come right back and continue, Keenan. Just take a small oh, break. Man, that's great. And we'll be right back. Okay. That's okay. What's up. You guys stand by. And if if, 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 if you stand by, can, can y'all still it's hear me, Jazz? Been and part of me to fight for those who couldn't fight for themselves, whether on my block or around the world. My name is First Lieutenant King, 
and I move toward the sounds of those who are in need of help. The few, the proud, the Marines. Um. Uh. Entry invalid. Um. Mode. Hmm. Mode. Um. Five seconds. Uh. Oh. The Windows Phone 8X by HTC on Verizon. It features easy-to-navigate live tiles that are simple to customize. Just pin what matters most right to your home screen. Exclusively with DataSense, a feature that makes the most of your plan, only on Verizon. SCGPW. SCGPW. That's right. The Select USA TV Collabo Media Groups and Partners Worldwide for a limited time has opened up its membership to the general public. Now you can collaborate worldwide with media conglomerate conglomerate SIBN SIBN Television and and Radio. If you want to join free of charge for this limited time offer, then visit www.wesupportselectusatv.com. That's right. We have programs, benefits, service, and so much more to offer to our members exclusively Exclusively at SCGPW. SCGPW. That's right. Visit www.wesupportselectusatv.com. USATV.com. That's www. We support S A L E T T E USATV.com. All right, y'all, we're back here with the Keenan Lake Show live and on the band on SIBN Radio. Keenan, back to you. Coach, I'm glad that you, uh, you, you allowed us to have a little more time on the show. That's great. So Dan, Dan had a great point just now. Tyson, how would you like to weigh in on that? About Okay. We, um, as we speak, I'm, I'm going to turn to all of you. We actually took up to Cedar Point or Sandusky, Ohio. Um, we took 20 kids up there and we stayed a couple of weeks. But I bring that point up because, you know, I have about 100 kids that went into my summer camp program. And, you know, all of my kids are of minority descent. I have a couple of Hispanic kids, and everybody else is black. And every time we go on an off-site field trip, before we even leave, you know, we have a saying, who, who are you representing? They all say God. Oh. Who are you representing? You know, who represent ourselves? Then who? Who represents Successful Star Learning Academy? So, you know, we, all, we, you know, we put it out there that the stereotypes exist. And there's nothing you can really do about a stereotype that, that someone already has in their mind. But what you can do, you can huh. change how they view you based on how you respond and based on how you conduct yourself. And, and, and we don't have from the racism. There are some racist remarks made actually over in Ohio and the mile on, uh, on Thursday. And the kids heard it. But I always tell them, like, listen, you know, your flesh is always going to tell you to do one thing and most times it's going to be wrong. Your flesh, you may not want to hit somebody or you may want to tell them all, but you have to swallow that and don't give them the, the response that they're seeking. And, well, let, me, let me interrupt and, you real quick, Tyson, and I hate to do that because you're making a valid point, but but you and Jazz both made a comment. And what I want to find, and, and I understand, I understand there, there, there are stereotypes. But this, that does not make it fair. And let me just say this, too, okay? Oh, no, it's not let's fair. Just, let's just say this. And, Coach, you can weigh on this, too, but let's just say this. Going back to the whole Zimmerman thing, okay, we, we, all, we all, for the most part, talked about primarily this whole thing probably be, uh, more than likely <clears throat> coming about because of racial profiling. Now, Jazz, you made a very, very good point that maybe it wasn't racial profiling. But I think that, we, I think that some of the – I think the majority of folks would say that it was. So, but the thing is this, okay? And, I, and, and trust me, I understand that we have a hole to dig ourselves out of with this black image. You know, you know the 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 thug, the thug image. The you know I'm, I'm I can kill I can do you know I'm a thug. You know that that whole image that that is not us. But with that being said, what what why does that mean? Okay, you know what? I'm an educated I'm an educated black man. Everybody on this telephone is educated. Why should we be subjected to those type of, that type of treatment when well, it's not fair? Yes, yeah, it's a stereotype, but it's not right, and it's not fair. Well, I, think, I, mean, I, think, I think that it's not right, but... I think that uh, Jazz and I think that uh, the, the other young man, I think the points that they're bringing up is, is not part of the national conversation, and that is, Keenan, what you've been saying in every last one of your shows, until, and, look, and I've said it, Keenan, you've been saying it, we don't need black heroes right now. What we need is daddies and mamas exactly. raising 
they kids, and I hate to go eat bonics on it, but they kids and, and, and Pookie and them and get and get off Come your on. behind and stop and look after you get done marching and after you get done shouting and sitting in we want to see Come some on. statistical data that shows that folks then went back to their homes and start parenting. Folks then showed up at the PS, PS, uh, the, 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 the school's PSA. Is that what it's called? The folks then, folks then showed up at work on time and they leaving and they in a hurry to get to their kids, uh, after school programs to pick them up and help them with their homework. We want to see the reading scores improve. And so I think what these two young men are saying, Keenan, they're giving air to a conversation that we are afraid to talk about which is our responsibility in this tragedy and i think that that's what these two young men are saying listen we can't speculate we we try to and we try to be respectful and we try to be all of that but at the end of the day keenan it goes back to what you've said from day one on your show in your books and in your philosophy and in your program black folks got to stop showing out because we already right. know we are the smallest minority. We're not the Hispanics that moved in second place. We in third place <laughs> and still cutting the food. Mm. As long as as long as who says this though? What about the listener who says this? I hear those guys. I hear those brothers, and they and maybe they're right. But this 2013, we done paid our dues. We paid our dues, and we, we, we should not have to still be subjected to this. So, you, but you well, know I what you are. I understand that what, what, what Tyson and what Jerry are saying. And I understand what you say, Coach, and, and I, like you said, I say this every day. But every subjected day to what? Every day that I talk what? to my kids and every day that I talk to my Sub- parents. Su- subjected to what? Subjected to what is the ahead, question. Coach. That's the question. Subjected to what? Let me, let me, if, these, if these men had time, and Kenan, you would also, if you had the time, we could go back into the to, to, to the you know annals of history and talk about spilled blood by black Americans who knew what they were dying for. The problem in America is black folks don't know what they're dying for. All of a sudden now we got a cause. We should have had a cause a long time ago. But maybe, just maybe, the, the Lord's plan is to use this to stir up the sleeping giants in African American communities of which this show and many other shows have been trying to awaken the sleeping giant in our black homes. And listen, the other problem is this. There ain't nobody going to shine a light on the good that we do. We got to shine our own light on the good that we do. And as, t- as, as, as Jazz said, when you take your black behind out of my house and out of my schoolroom and out of the college dorm and wherever you go, you represent us. And you need to do it well. Mm-hmm. There you go. I mean, well, I mean, so, like, 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 the young men that were doing those wins in that neighborhood, they all had just as much responsibility and trade miles more as death. Yes, as sir. Yes, sir. And you know what? You know what's funny? It's sad because, you know what? I hate it because, you know, I come from the same community that Kenny comes from, and, and we talk about it all the time. Look, we have a lot of friends that are dead in jail. They're, you know, they have criminal records that we have. And we have more of the world that we're laying there now. And it's unfortunate because the world never sees me and views me as a, in the same way as going to the man that was going out here and done something that he shouldn't have done. Right, you right. Know, so, like, like, Kenny asked the question before the break. Oh, he's breaking up. He's breaking up bad. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but you're still breaking up a little bit. I don't know if you're moving or whatever, but it's breaking up. Because you, what you're saying is good, but we like sitting here on the edge of our seats. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. This is the thing. We, we can't change... Uh, how people view us, man. We're going to do the world with our youth and, and try to get them to understand the struggle that black folks have, have had to deal with to get what we have, man. Right. We're the spoiled generation. A very spoiled generation. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. You know, what I want to add to that, and I think for the very most part, what we're finding is, um, we're finding that a lot of, a lot, a lot of the different facets of the hood struggle are being attempted to be uh, met or satisfied 
um, or, or resolved in a secular fashion. And what I believe is, I believe that this issue is a theological issue. And what I mean by that is not that we've got to, we got to uh, force kids to go to church and everything's going to turn around, but what's happening, I believe, is simply that uh, we got a lack, we got a, we got a, a complete breakdown of the family unit in our hoods. Yes, yes. Complete breakdown, and I don't see how or why that is going to change until our people, black people, are reminded of God's purpose for their lives. Right. The question is, why should I be a better mom or a better dad? Why should I make sure that before I lay down and make a baby, that I'm going to require this brother not only to tell me he loves me, but I'm going to be married to him before I bring a child into this world. Listen, what would motivate somebody to make that decision outside of them getting tight but, with Jesus Christ? But, but you know, listen, let me, let, let me, Jazz, I sympathize with you, and I asked my dad one time, I said, Dad, am I antique now? <laughs> because the message of Christ has been lost with a, a cultural message. But let's get back to the drawing board. It doesn't, you know, you, the Bible even suggests that you don't have to be a born-again Christian to be responsible. You don't have to be a born-again uh, born again Christian to be accountable. And I think what Keenan's trying to say is that, listen, and, and I like what, I like what uh, 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 the other young man said. Back in the day, black folks would have said what that young man just said. The blood of Trayvon Martin is not only on the hands of George Zimmerman, but it is also on the hands of every young man running around in that neighborhood or was running around in that neighborhood, stealing, yeah. lying, mouthing off, cutting through yards and everything else. And back in the day, spiritual maturity for our people meant that you was accountable not only to your parents, but to the whole hood. And if you couldn't be accountable to the whole hood, you felt ashamed and you were on punishment. So, if, if, I, if I can piggyback on what you and I don't believe that you've got to be a born-again, baptized, sanctified, uh, a Holy Ghost-filled Christian churchgoer to, to do those things. But what I'm saying is I believe that, that a person's understanding, and it, I think Tyson's phone is going crazy again. Tyson's phone is doing <laughs> acrobats right now. Hey, y'all are <laughs> hey, but, but, but Jazz, it's those iPhones, man. Jazz, hey, whoever got an iPhone? I don't mean to give iPhone. Hey, no nothing is going on with my iPhone right now. My iPhone is doing just fine, brother. Jazz, if you got an iPhone, I don't know what it is, and I don't, I don't, I don't have an iPhone. No, no black, no bad publicity to the iPhone on the Keenan Lake show. If you have an iPhone, <laughs> we still support you. Just don't call us up, right? I mean, I'm still, I'm still hey, I'm hey, 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 what is the motivation? What what is the motivation behind a person getting to the point where they say, you know what, I do want to be the mother that I'm supposed to be? Well, who decides what the mother's supposed to be? Like, where's the standard? I, I mean, I'm where not. Where do we find it? Listen, listen, I'm not. Listen, listen. But I'm the wrong. Listen, Tyson, hold on, hold that point. Tyson, hold that point. I'm going to tell you, I'm the wrong one to ask about so-called Christians being responsible yep. parents because I, if you heard my story and, and knew what I went through as a child with Christians and the church, it would not be a good, it's not the, it's, you know, so what I'm saying is being a Christian should improve your life and does give you motivation. Jazz, you're absolutely right. But what I'm also saying is this. The Bible says that the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. And that gives credence to the fact that there are a lot of people out here who do things right that are not Christians. Now, getting back to the well, black community, well, I, I think... I'd love to know where the Bible says that, first of all. Well, look it up. I don't, I don't well, have my yeah, Bible. You quoted it. Could you tell no, me what that says? I'll, 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 I'll text. That's a different translation. No, I'll text it to you. The children of the children of that, darkness is wiser than the children of light. Jesus said that. I've never read that, bro. Uh, yeah, it's in there. That. New Testament, bro. But listen, my point was this, though. <laughs> my, my point is this, and I'll look it up while, when we take a break. I'll look it up for you. But listen, my but point I, is. I do understand your point. My well, point is this. I understand your point. The black community 
cannot ex- we spirituality has warped in our community. So I think Jazz's point is Absolutely. is legit. I, I agree with it. But what I'm saying to yeah. the listener out there who may be churched out or the one that goes sure. to church Absolutely. all the time, listen, whether you're Absolutely. a Christian or not, you got to be responsible. And if you're not responsible, the consequences, let's go back to the Bible again. Sin, the transgression of sin, everybody pays. Everybody pays. Right. It's not just that's that one family, that one kid, or that one mother or father. Everybody's paying. And, and I think that's where Jazz was going, is that when, when we leave Christ right. out, when we leave the, the blood out, when we, you know, all of these principles of Christianity, then we, have a, we see a ripple effect. And black people are mostly yes. affected because yes. Yes. we have sold sort of our souls, so to speak, to the to the to the money making situation. I don't want to get there, but I'm yeah. just saying. You know what I'm yeah. saying, right? But I'll look I look that one up for you. I look that scripture up for y'all. And give hey, it to Tyson, you. Tyson, go ahead and weigh in, Tyson, real quick before we go to break. Well, I, I was following up with what Jazz, what Jazz was saying, man. And ultimately, we I can't mean, I talk about this all the time. I, you know, I, I hate to be the, the Bible thumper, basically that I am, but I, I feel like, uh, you know, ultimately. When, when you when you are a Christian, and the, and the act of prayer is about humbling, the act of repentance is about asking for forgiveness. Yes. When, when you in that when that mind frame, you understand accountability. You asking God to forgive you because you done wrong. You understand mm-hmm. that? And, and, mm-hmm. and, and it carries on with every aspect of your life, man. You you know, you need to be accountable for your children, and not just your children for each and every action mm-hmm. that you're responsible for. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for me, you know, my faith is everything. I don't, I, I don't, I try not to do, I'm not perfect, but I try not to do things based on how I feel personally. Because if I did, you know, everything that I did would be wrong, whether it would lead me down the wrong path. And I, I think that's what James was saying, that you, you know, you, we're going away from God. This world is going further away from God than it is going closer. And I think mm-hmm. you, you're seeing with Christian. Right. You're seeing it now. You're seeing it in our culture, man. The, the nuclear family is non-existent. Uh, Tony and mm-hmm. I have a running joke about um, how we tweeted to him because he was laying with his father in his household. That's always talking. My dad was always thinking, you, you, know, you, you should be a mother with a dad to my place. This is your dad was there. So now I'm not with that. So, you know, I should not be able to compete with you because I understand having a father changes the dynamic. It changes your level of confidence. It changes your level of responsibility. It changes everything. And if you don't have that, you don't have a nuclear family. But you know what's so funny? You, 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 but Tyson, here's what's funny. What? The, the race that has the most to lose, and this has been this has been followed down through history, the race that has the most to lose would not honor the God that brought us out. And now that that scripture that you wanted is Luke sixteen eight. For the children of this world are in this generation wiser than the children of light. Folks that go to church. Now I'm gonna tell you how we didn't went wrong, and that's another show. But real short, we've went wrong because we're so churchified that we forgot to be more responsible in the home church. The, the walls of and, and church. Real quick, coach. And the, real quick, coach. Jazz and I had a long conversation about this yesterday, and uh, a day before yesterday. And see, and I and I agree. This is the thing. I, and and I, I love my I love my Christ. I love Jesus. I love you know. I'm not perfect by no means. I'm not perfect by no means, but I love Jesus. But this, the thing is this too. It's more about. It's, and I think the point that you're trying to make, coach, is this. It's, it's, it's more to it than just going to church and praying. Right. We gotta put mm. forth. We gotta put forth the the effort. Of, it says works. Uh, was it proven that works is dead? We gotta right. be able to have. We gotta be able to have works with our prayer. And I'm we telling can't you, can't say, you know what? I went to church and I prayed about it, and and we're gonna save this generation uh, on prayer alone. Keenan. It's not about that. It's about it's about praying about it, leaving it in God's hands. But we still gotta get out there and do the work that He aligns and, and shows us that we have to do. And back to Jazz's point, we gotta we gotta put away speculation. I think that's a Christ-like feature when He started speaking earlier. Hey, let's put away speculation for right now. And, and, you know, that's a civic thing that we got going on. And let's remember the spiritual component of this entire situation, I think, was what Jazz was saying earlier. But what I'm saying to you guys is this. And I appreciate you guys reminding the listening audience that becoming a Christian or being a Christian is very, very, it's a central part of life. It's everything for us. But at the same time, I think that what has been lost in the black community is that 
Dude, we having a good time at church. We having a good time in the uh, club. We having a good time getting our money. We having a good time getting our education. And we didn't forget who we were. Yeah. We didn't completely exactly right. forgot who we were. Tyson, go yeah. ahead. <clears throat> or Jazz, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to second exactly what you're saying. I do appreciate you um, you finding that that scripture reference. As a matter of fact, it is in there. Uh, the way you quoted it was a little different than what I remember. Um, but you, your point is very well said and received. And I want I want to say that I don't think that um, that that people a family has to be Christian in order to contribute. Uh, in a positive way to our society or our community. What I am saying is that uh, it's interesting. You, you said something that, that stuck out to me, um, and, and you said, you know, as part of your experience that you have uh, essentially, you know, in, in one way or another, um, you've kind of found yourself being churched out, so to speak, as far as the routine and the, and the drama that comes with that, if I, if I understood you correctly. And you used the term so-called Christians. What I'm saying is, I think those of us who know Christ um, and love Christ and want to honor Him, want to love people the way Christ has loved us, I think we should we should do the very best that we can to be intentional about setting an example for those who are so-called Christians, so that we can recognize that there is a distinction between those who who wear the label and those who live the life. And I'm not saying that a person has to be a Christian in order to be a good man as far as yeah, our yeah. society is concerned. Mm -hmm. But we should be the best examples. I think we should be the best examples. Mm -hmm. There you and, go, Jeff. And, and I believe that if, if, we, if we were serious, we should get serious on a large scale right. about uh, making sure that, that what we found in Christ, that it permeates our value system as a black and, community. But that's just and, the point. And I agree. That's just the we point, have Jazz. Lost. We, we've lost a sense of ourselves, but, and we have. And but, what I'm saying is, when, when we get rooted in our love for Almighty God, mm -hmm. we'll want to desire to do things His way. And when we do things His way, we, go, we look at the family and we say, man, this thing is completely jacked up. Mm -hmm. So I can't help but to make God a part of the, the equation when I'm talking with young people when it comes to saving themselves, not going out and getting young uh, women pregnant, mm -hmm. not going to the mall and stealing things, not uh, gang-banging or uh, not smoking weed. The, the God is a part of that equation because the question is, well, what's my motivation? What's right. my motive? I'd rather just chill. Why shouldn't I just chill and kick it with my homies and do what I want to, uh, run up and down the block? Mm -hmm. why, not, why not do that? And so God, yeah. as far as my experience is concerned, is a part of that equation because otherwise I'm left with, well, well why don't you just be good for goodness sake. Right, and right. what my but little homies are asking in the hood is, well, I, my definition of good is chilling. But what's, bang, bang, what was part uh, of our conversation, though, and Jazz, I want you to, I want to ask you this question in the form of a statement, then a question. What was part of our, yeah. our heritage as uh, African Americans uh -huh. was the center of the Christian experience coupled with yeah. a heritage yeah. of a people mm. who were proud not only of our color, not only of our, our, yes. our legacy in Africa and the motherland, mm -hmm. but also of values that have now since in this westernized situation been eroded uh -huh. with the rewards of, of paying jobs, nothing wrong with it, with the rewards of luxury, nothing wrong with it, with the rewards of educational uh -huh. degrees and so forth and so on. And so I think that what we've had to learn, because I, I'm still a Christian, I'm bona fide uh, a, a Christian, uh -huh. but I think that the western culture and I'm talking about the United States right now, has coined okay. what we should and could do or we shouldn't and can't mm. do and has limited the power of Christ that can change mm. a kid like me. I mean, look at how uh, I was. I was one of the ones that mm. stole and ran, and, and I had two parents, and we were in church and all that. But I think these kids yeah. are crying out back to you you guys, what you guys do every day. They're crying out, as you said, back to the spiritual yeah. component, is that when kids yeah. steal, that's crying out. When kids uh, get angry mm. and fight and, and, and become violent, they're crying out. And so yeah. I think the greater yeah. question that you're saying or the challenge that you may be giving us is this. If we're going to answer the root problem 
of what's ailing black America, we got to return to the foundation of scriptural scriptural principles and be accountable and responsible Mm -hmm. with that scriptural principle. That's what I think I hear you saying. That's right. That's right. And and what I would the last thing I'll contribute to that is simply stating that as far as I'm concerned and as far as my experience goes, what I have recognized is not that the values of the kingdom have changed, but our the address of the culture has changed. Right. And so it's not that black people necessarily missing it as far as the the values that that we're we're anchored in. However, you know, old school black um It's not reaching gospel, our generation. It's not. So what right. we do is yeah. we keep we, we stay faithful to who Christ is and the and the values of the cult of the kingdom mm-hmm. and we deliver that in a way where these young people can apply Christ to the exactly. way they live right now. Okay, well let me let me give my shout out real quick. First of all I wanna thank my guests, I wanna thank Tyson Bates, I wanna thank Jazz Cathcart, and I also wanna thank you coach for being on the show. If you want to get in touch with the Keenan Lake, you can reach me at the Keenan Lake Show. That's on Facebook. Also, my daddy taught me that, and my personal Facebook is Keenan Lake. You can you can follow me on Twitter at the KL Show, and please tune in uh, to the next Keenan Lake Show. Also, my website, uh, mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Please check out the website. I just did some updates to my website. I actually have a button on there that is uh, if you're willing to donate not only to the KL show, Keenan Lake show, but you can also donate to my daddy taught me that. We're accepting donations now. This is a nonprofit, so please feel free to hit that button. Check out the website, and uh, also you can reach me by uh, telephone, area code 828-582-2261. We thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you next time. Thank Have you for joining day. us today for the Keenan Lake show. We know you will be empowered as you consider the content shared by Mr. Keenan Lake, co-host Marcus Select, and our guests. For more information about Mr. Keenan Lake, please visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat and feel free to email us at lake at mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Books can be ordered from Mr. Lake by calling 828-582-2261. Until next time, you've been listening to The Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio.